Madam Chairman, I have reviewed the minutes from our previous meeting and find them to be in order. And without objection, I move for their approval. Thank you. I'll second that. Very good. Thank you. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. All right. Health Department. Ms. LeShan, come on up. Good evening. Tonight I will be presenting the Health Department Report of Community Health, Health Outreach, providing COVID-19 updates, and also speaking on a memorandum of understanding with the Journey Home Incorporated. If you will, at this time, please take a look at the April and May 2021 Report of Community Health Outreach. Our three columns labeled Protect, Promote, and Improve once again have not changed much as our staff continues to work hard to ensure that we test, vaccinate, and provide education and guidance to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19 in our county. Moving forward with our COVID-19 updates. So we are very grateful to Mayor Ketron as well as to State Farm for the partnership that was formed that allowed us to vaccinate over 48,000 residents in our county over the course of six months. Like a good neighbor, State Farm was there and we truly appreciate the support that they gave us during this time of need. As our testing and vaccination numbers start to decline in Rutherford County, the Rutherford County Health Department will be changing its vaccination and testing sites beginning this Monday, June the 28th. The COVID-19 vaccination site will be moving from State Farm Operations back to the Rutherford County Health Department located at 100 West Burton Street, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37133. Starting on Monday, June 28th, COVID-19 vaccinations will take place in the rear conference room where we will keep the same days and same times Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. Our number of vac vaccines reported for our entire county is roughly 225,000, which is the percent county population of about 37.19 um, with at least one vaccinated. Testing. Our COVID-19 testing will also take place at the Rutherford County Health Department in the rear parking lot. We will have drive-up testing by appointment only on Monday and on Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 10.30. To schedule an appointment, we're asking that our residents call 615-898-7880, which is our health department's number. Additionally, we will continue to give out self-test kits, which can be picked up Monday through Friday between 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Currently, we are vaccinating roughly 40 individuals daily and testing about 15. Along with testing, we will continue to work all health public, public health investigation that goes along with positive cases in their contacts seven days a week. Over the last seven days, our average positive percentage was 1%. 1%. This is where we were back in March of last year. So 1% with a case count of about 36 daily. Also, in an ongoing effort to maximize our outreach and access, as we know that our numbers are a little lower than our counterparts around us, Rutherford County Health Department will continue to work with members of churches, community groups, community events and facilities and businesses to bring COVID-19 vaccinations to off-site locations. So we're asking that anyone who would like to have any of these vaccination efforts done at their location to on Monday, beginning Monday, to visit our website at health.rutherfordcounty.gov and we will have a survey on there they can complete and we will contact them to work together to be able to provide vaccines to those who want it here most in our county. Furthermore, this information will be shared via social media with our community partners and we want to say thank you to our amazing public health information officers and a special thank you to Ashley McDonald who's our county PIO for all of the support that she's given us. Once again, I do want to thank and take this opportunity to thank our amazing staff as we have gone through a lot over the past year um, with the loss of Dana Garrett, which today is her 50th birthday, so I know she's celebrating in heaven with us right now. I also want to thank Chris Clark, our law enforcement, EMS, Cody York, and the county IT team, and the call center workers who provided assistance to us during this pandemic. Additionally, I want to also note before closing and, and going into our next report is that the, there are 50 vaccination locations 
here in our county within um, 25 mile radius of this location right here. So we have plenty of places that are vaccinated and I encourage everyone who wants one to be vaccinated. They can go to vaccines.gov in order to locate those vaccination sites. So at this time, I will close this report and ask if there are any questions. Any questions for health department report? Good, very good, thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. No? Any opposed? Very good, thank you. Yes, Ms. Carroll. Friend of mine called me about midnight. We had the Pfizer second shot. And about 12 hours later, after he had shot, he went into a, a, a fever and went into the pains and so forth, had all, nearly all the symptoms. So when the paramedics come, said, you want to go to the hospital? I said, what are they going to do? Nothing. Why don't we have a shot to counteract this? Now, this shot is so important. We need something. He didn't have any problems with the first shot. And my arm wasn't even sore. So that's something I think our science, medical science, need to be working on big time. Yes, ma'am. Any other comments or questions? I, I do have one. Um, Ms. Dixon, on the, I was just looking at your reports, and I think there's different places where you're going to begin to experience a surge where there was sort of a pent up demand for some of your services. Are you seeing those in any particular areas, and are there things you're having to do staffing wise or scheduling wise to sort of accommodate that? So currently we are we have opened back up our doors of the health department and we were asking that everyone um, who wants services of course to continue to um, call to schedule an appointment however we have seen an uptake in our WIC program so our women infant and children's program and so we are able currently until I think it's um, August the 21st to provide a lot of those services virtually and so therefore they're not having to come to the health department to receive those services and we can upload those benefits to their cards so they can get the food and nutrition um, advice that they're needing from um, our nutrition that we have at the health department and so we've been able to successfully uh, mitigate some of those um, strains that may come to our health department but we are very excited to open back up our health department and to see our patients back in our, our facilities once again awesome very good okay and then I know you also have an MOU for us to take a look at yes ma'am so over the last year, um, we've been able to successfully develop and leverage partnerships in our county um, and even beyond. And so tonight, um, I would like to present to you all Mr. Scott Foster and Mr. Billy Trousdale. Uh, they are with the Journey Home, and I would like to present to you all this memorandum of understanding between the Journey Home Incorporated, a nonprofit public corporation, the State of Tennessee Department of Health, Rutherford County Health Department, and the Rutherford County, Tennessee, regarding Journey's Home's provision of outreach engagement and housing stabilization services to the residents of Rutherford County at the Community Education Center of Smyrna offices located at the Rutherford County Health Department in Smyrna, Tennessee. So this MOU, I'll just be highlighting some of the facts uh, which have been reviewed by both our county and the state attorneys. So the Journey Home is engaging in providing certain charitable outreach, engagement, and housing stability services, and the Rutherford County Health Department is desiring to engage the services of the Journey Home to perform certain tasks set forth. The Journey Home also desires to enter into this memorandum of understanding, and the Rutherford County Health Department and County are willing to do so on the terms set forth. So the purpose of this memorandum of understanding is the provision of housing stability services located from the Journey Home to the residents of Rutherford County is in direct response to the health and economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic. As these circumstances have been a national, national in scope, the federal government and other agencies have established resources to help our citizens towards economic stabilization and the reestablishment of pathways to normalcy and community life. The term. This is a temporary solution for this time period, and the term of this memorandum of understanding shall be from the date of execution until June 30th, 2022. At that time, the continuation of services will be evaluated and may be available for an extended period of mutual agreement as of both the parties. So the site. 
as we pivot towards developing wraparound services here in our county, especially with our health department, we have recognized that over the last year, we've had a lot of opportunity for us to work with our patients remotely. Therefore, we see this as an opportunity to truly protect, promote, and improve the health and prosperity of individuals here in our county. And so we felt that we could leverage this relationship and le leverage this space that's being, that's being underutilized at our health department to really be able to promote not only our WIC program, but the programs that the Journey Home also offers. So the site will be our Smyrna Rutherford County Health Department located at 108 David Collins Drive. And the services shall be provided during the same business hours as the Rutherford County Health Department operates and no additional staffing will be required on part of the Rutherford County Health Department or the county. The Journey Home will, it will supply all necessary staff, equipment, and supplies and will perform the services um, that are entitled to which are lo located in Section 4. Number five, no cost. The services provided to Journey Home are primarily funded by the Emer Emergency Solutions Grant CARES Act funding provided by HUD and THDA. The Journey Home should provide the services described at no monetary cost to the Rutherford County Health Department or to the county. Number six speaks about the termination and the termination for convenience, the termination for calls, and then number seven speaks to Journey Home also releasing the Rutherford County Health Department, the county, and their respective employees, agents, trustees, officers, representatives, and, and assigns from any liability related to the loss of equipment or supplies. Number eight speaks to insurance. The Journey Home should maintain insurance coverage as specified in this section, which is literally a page and a half. Um, additionally, the commercial gen general liability insurance and workers' compensation and employee liability insurance is covered in there, along with the automobile liability insurance. And number nine, the Rutherford County Health Department or county furnished property. Journey Home shall be responsible for the correct use, maintenance, and protection of all property furnished by the Rutherford County Health Department or county for the Journey Home's temporary use under this memorandum of understanding. And 10, we have the communications and contacts listed from Journey Home, Scott Foster. Rutherford County Health Department, myself as the county director, and the county, Bill Ketron, county mayor. Um, any additions to this adjustments or memorandum of understanding may only be added by the mutual written consent of both parties. And number C or letter C speaks to our, the relationship. Additionally, we have the limitation of the state's liability, the county's liability, um, and then the governing law and jurisdiction assignment, and then a few acts, including our Iran Diversement Act and the Environmental Tobacco Policy. We're asked that th you all consider this. Once again, the state and county attorneys have reviewed this memorandum of understanding, and we're seeking your approvals to present this to the full commission on Monday. And at this time, I will turn it back to Madam Chair for any questions or comments. Any questions regarding the MOU? Director Dixon and I discussed this. The highlights are basically no expense to Rutherford County. Um, one of the big concerns that I had was security, and that's not in the contract, but that's going to be, I guess, more of a policy arrangement that you'll have with them. They're going to have a separate entrance, and so they will not be using the same entrance as the um, folks that will be coming in for the health department services, and they are going to create a way, that create a gate or something along those lines um, to keep the two sections secure from each other. So, yes. Yes, Commissioner Key. Use your microphone, please. Thanks. Where is the Journey Home currently located? Scott, would you like to come and? Haley Road. What's Haley. Haley Road. Haley Road. Is that right? Okay. Journey Home. Yes. 308 West uh, Castle the train Street. Tracks over there. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to picture it and that, <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. That's the one that we, we own the building on. It's on Haley Road. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Any other questions? Commissioner Gammon. I really think it's a good idea for the whole county, uh, especially in uh, mine in Carroll Cook's area out toward Laverne. Uh, I've had some folks inquire about help and things like that. I uh, only had one question. I just want to make sure. I, I'm sure our attorney does look this over and everything. And uh, it's like a deal too good to be true. So, 
Yes, it truly is. We did have um, several conversations back and forth with the state attorney as well as the county attorney, understanding that we provide services at the health department for both state and county. But also, this is a, a truly good opportunity for us to be able to provide those services on the north end of our county. Um, and I know the Journey Home has done a lot of amazing work here in, in Murfreesboro, um, but I think it's truly an opportunity for us to tr engage with our residents down there on the north end of the county and also to be able to provide those wraparound services. There's no other question, oh, Commissioner Key. And this is Scott Foster, is it? Yes. Okay, very good. I'll take a chance to meet you afterwards. <laughs> very good, thank you. Good. Commissioner Gurley. I was just going to make a motion that we approve this memorandum of understanding as presented. Very good, thank you. Very good, thank you. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Director Dixon. We appreciate you. Okay, next on the agenda is community care. And so, Mayor, I turn that over to you. And Carol, any good news you want to share? Commissioner Cook, any comments? Okay. <laughs> uh, members, uh, <clears throat> Mr. David Zach was the um, CEO for United Church Homes that came down and basically served in the interim and in getting the nursing home back on track after our last, the last. Um, director had retired and um, so he served here lived in the uh, um, house that's the, the old farmhouse out there slapped some paint on it and he lived in it for what four months maybe while they were actively looking for a, a full-time replacement to take over the nursing home they found one his name is David uh, I'm sorry Tanner Faust F-O-U-S-T um, so he will be an employee of United Church Homes out of Ohio, um, and but still the board has control uh, over community care, and um, he's excited about it. And he actually lives in Thompson Station, uh, right across the line in Williamson County, and uh, he's excited about it. The board members are excited about uh, him being here. They all like him. He's young and got a got a young child and wife he's uh, uh, excited about being here and doing new things the the wing is under construction it should be finished probably within the next 30 to 45 days so we'll be able to expand and and uh, add more patients which will really get our our census up um, and uh, really start making some money at that point in time that's girly yes yeah, I was just going to comment that uh, my wife had the opportunity to visit a patient there last week, something uh, neither one of us have been there for quite some time, right. along with a lot of other people haven't been there. And But uh, she was really impressed with the way things were and how things were clean and how they're handling visitation and, and all that. So... Uh, yeah, for my wife to be impressed is pretty good. Yeah, we once we get everything uh, tightened up and finished, contractor leaves, and we'll we'll invite you out, you know, for maybe another meeting like we did this last year before COVID hit, and and have a little get together, and let you tour the new wing, and you know maybe some of the vegetables that we're trying to grow out there in the new garden. Uh, last time I was out there. The uh, weeds were growing faster than the tomatoes and other things, beans that they planted. But uh, uh, Mr. Cook's real pleased with the director, and uh, Mr. Bodery, he's uh, he's done an excellent job in helping us steer the, um, the this company and that we're working with. We're we're very pleased with their administration and how they're doing things. Any Carol, more? any comments? Okay. Anyone else have questions about community care? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Very good. All in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Very good. All right, Ms. Jelly. Special projects. This is our monthly report where we go over bills that are paid. Um, any percentage of the money spent compared to the completion of the construction? Any, anything in particular you want to point out to us, Ms. Jolly? A lot of times I know month to month it doesn't change. It's so. nothing much has changed, if anybody has a question. Any questions for Ms. Jolly on this report? 
not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Thank you. Very good, thank you. All in favor? Please say aye. Any opposed? Very good, thank you. All right, school board, you're up. Welcome. We've got two uh, budget amendments on 141, uh, one on 143, and one on 177. So if we could take those first two 141 uh, together, is it all right? That'd be great. All right, let me get my glasses on there so I can see. All right, this is the general purpose school fund year-end uh, cleanup amendment. This is a routine annual cleanup amendment uh, to true up revenue and expenditure line items at the end of the fiscal year. This amendment increases the revenues for the 2020-2021 school year by $13,552,865 and utilizes $1,605,800 for the 2020-2021 expenditures. The largest expenditures are for contract, uh, contracted services for moving our portable classrooms over the summer, also additional cleaning supplies uh, overages, and, and as well as some cleaning supplies for the summer cleaning. Uh, replacement of teacher computers, the increase in budgeting for county trustee commissions. It should be noted that the revenue side of the amendment contains the largest increase uh, from the option sales tax rev local option sales tax revenue. While the, local op uh, lo while the local option sales tax had a strong growth this fiscal year, the school board worked closely with the county commission during the uh, budget prep for fiscal year 2020-2021 to have the local uh, option sales tax uh, for the current year reflect the original budgeted local sales tax amount for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. All right. Uh, the next one, General Purpose School Fund 141 End Cleanup Amendment. This is the final year end cleanup amendment for the General Purpose School Fund to true up payroll line items after the last certified payroll run and uh, purchase order cutoff. This increases the payroll lines to include items such as payouts of leave for retiring employees and the associated benefits as well as to budget uh, for a previous reclassification of the occupational therapist and the CODA salaries under the health service line items. Motion to approve uh, the 2020-21 uh, year-end cleanup amendments for 141 uh, budget as, a, as a rep uh, presented. Very good. Any questions on this? This is pretty routine end of fiscal year maintenance that we do. If there's no questions, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Good, thank you. Second. Very good. Since it's money, Rachel, will you give us a roll call? Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Key? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gourley? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes, thank you. Okay, continue. All right, please. next is the Fund 143 uh, year end cleanup amendment. Uh, this is routine year end cl uh, cleanup amendment that trues up revenue on line items to reflect transition to the seamless summer program during the current school year. On the expenditure side, payroll line items were adjusted to recognize the non-recurring half-year 2% pay raise that was approved by the school board earlier in this spring, as well as to recognize decrease of food prep supplies and food purchases that were brought about by lower meal preparation during the fall due to the number of students who were distance learning. There was also a change in how bulk food purchases were ordered to help minimize spoilage that leads to waste. The equipment expenditure line item increased due to additional purchases of needed replacement of kitchen equipment for several of our cafeterias that are being utilized this summer for our summer uh, accelerated learning camps. It should be noted that this year's cleanup amendment uh, does not include a meal debt write-off as the outstanding debt for this fiscal year is $4.70 as compared to the past fiscal year of $156,313. Recommend motion to approve the fund of 144, uh, one, or excuse me, 143 budget amendment as presented. Very good. Any questions about that? Second. Very good. Roll call, Victor. 
I would just add that uh, Mr. Bouldery has promised that next year's uh, bad debt will be even less. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll take it out of his salary. Great. That's great. <laughs> All right, next is Fund 177, Mr. year-end Director cleanup. Dr. Spurlock, give one second. We need I'm to vote. I'm sorry. We need sorry to vote. I got ahead of you. Yeah. Commissioner Key? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gorley? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. It'll be less. I bet yes. it will, too. I, will. I guarantee you. I don't want to lose that money. That's right. <laughs> Fund 177 year-end cleanup amendment. This is a routine year-end cleanup amendment that trues up revenue on the line items as the end, on the line revenue line items at the end of the fiscal year. It increases the 2020-21 revenues by $203,819, and it utilizes $10,000 for the 2020-21 uh, expenditures. Uh, the increase in the expenditures to reflect an increase in the current year county trustee commissions. Uh, the increase in the revenues is to reflect actual collections to date and over budgeted projects for the current fiscal year. The additional funds will be placed in any fund balance to help offset increasing cost of capital projects for fiscal year 2021 2022 and I might add we will probably be seeing some increases uh, recommend motion to approve fund 177 budget amendment as presented very good any questions I'll entertain a motion thank you thank you give us a roll Commissioner Gorley? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Blair? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Mr. Key? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes. Thank you. All right. If I could just get, do a little update. Uh, we're finishing up our uh, summer learning programs in K through 8 on uh, Thursday. Uh, these high schools are uh, our, our high school. Uh, still in summer school, it will it will end sometime in, uh, late July. But the commissioner of Ed will be coming out on July the first, and unfortunately, I will not be able to bring her to the uh, K eight, but I'll take her into the high school. Uh, of course, this these camps and these uh, will, will occur again next year. It's been a good turnout. Uh, we got you know we've got a lot of kids that are, are uh, recapturing some of the learning that they lost. Uh, it's going to take a, a while, but we're going to be doing things also during the uh, year as far as after school, uh, before school, depending on the, on the age range. So thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've, I've seen quite a bit of traffic mm -hmm. behind my house, uh, <laughs> so which means too, things huh? are going on, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, I did notice that uh, a portable has come in to the elementary school. Could you elaborate on that? or? Yeah, we're... Uh, we we're actually exper experiencing a lot of growth in, in the elementary grades. Of course, we, we, we see that it's going to hit us on uh, other grades. Uh, and we're looking at a uh, rezoning type plan that we'll be looking at for next, uh, next year in the fall that will take place for the, the following year. Uh, everyone wants to live in our area, uh, Commissioner Gurley. You know, it's, it's amazing. Yes, Commissioner Phillips. Thank you. At the budget committee the other night there was a lot of discussion on roofs and there was supposed to be some follow-up with that and with health and ed Commissioner, will you use your microphone i'm sorry i'm sorry i need you to use your microphone for the television say that again i need you to use your microphone for the television <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks uh the the reason i'm asking is is because you, you know the figures that you know that we're looking at on the emails uh, is it, staggering you know four and a half million bucks uh potential savings I, any update on that we are still you know uh mr lee there's a there's a lot of uh roofs obviously that uh would 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 fit a typical uh we can do it for reduced price and we're still we're still working with that uh much of this is going to be coming from much of the funding here of this will be coming from sr3 uh, we're, we have not filed our application yet. We're in the process of doing it. Uh, you know, the state, quite frankly, or uh, this is a this this fund is going to be heavily, uh, you know, looked at. In fact, I've got a webinar that I will be listening to next week on that topic of of allowable expenses for infrastructure. 
uh, you know, for, for that ESSER point three point zero. But yes, uh, we, nothing has been finalized any in that in that position. All right. Oh, along those lines, Director, it, do we have any information regarding our former ESCO loans in terms of the effectiveness of those, um, the cost savings measures? Because those were loans that we took out in order right. to retrofit uh, our buildings to make them more energy efficient. I can't remember who asked him that same question, uh, Trey, but we do have that. We've done an energy audit. We okay. have done an energy okay. audit. I know there was some concern about that. We discussed the other night. Are we, are we looking at that closely? I, just, yeah, I knew that we in had. In fact, I'll, I'll bring it uh, sometime here soon or send it, have them send it to all you commissioners. But he did, we have in the process of doing an audit. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had another question on our graduation rate. Did we see any impact on our graduation rate from COVID? You know, we have a little bit, but not as much as the other systems have. Uh, we've got a, a couple of high schools that were some uh, errors in, in what they submitted that we've got to clean up, but uh, we haven't seen it impact us like, like other uh, systems have. And then to the good news, do we have a ribbon cutting date for Plainview? We do, and uh, that's, in fact, uh, that was discussed today, and I'm sure uh, Ms. Hopkins, who's taking okay. over from Ms. Michaels, she's going to be sending that out. Yeah, very good. So very we good. look forward to that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Ms. Spurlock. <laughs> yes, sir. The virtual yeah. academy, is that, did we're, I understand that it's capped at 1,500? Right, uh, but we're, we're, we're actually still, <laughs> we're, we're somewhere between 350 and 400 currently. And, uh, you know, we've been we've been advertising. We'll probably will go uh, a little bit further with this uh, in, in, in this fall. Uh, we've done a campaign to, to, to try to you know to try to get him. I anticipate that pr that will probably grow incrementally. You know, people are unsure about it right now. I also point out that we also did a um, uh, we're doing a, a partnership with Graduation Alliance, and what what that is an outside entity that will work with our adult uh, school for, for uh, adults that haven't completed their uh, graduation, uh, their diploma. And uh, we, will, we will work with them to help our citizens of Rutherford County and surrounding counties. And for the Virtual Academy, uh, the, the board is paid like that student is actually That's in the correct. building. So the uh, Virtual Academy, it's, it's, we, we get ADM from them just like they were in a, another school. So 1,500 students out of the classroom would uh, Would make a big difference in, so, in a lot of uh, places, especially if they were in certain schools now. Yes, sir. You know, it always works well. Right, right. Uh, but uh, quite frankly, every school uh, you know, could use a little bit of relief. Yes, you know. sir. But we are looking at two big... Uh, uh, rezoning projects next fall, this coming fall, uh, that will kind of put a band-aid on it for a while and, and increasing our virtual school uh, along with, with getting back to talking about uh, multi-track, you know, something that we can do to, to put off building for two or three years. Or so. yeah. okay. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for them? All right, so um, our next meeting, July 27th, we always keep that on the calendar. Um, it can be a little bit tentative. It just depends on if there's any business to conduct. So if there is, we'll meet. If the school board nor the health department have anything pressing, then we will let you know that that meeting is canceled. But keep it on your calendar for now. Okay. Right. Anybody have anything else for this group? Very good. We are adjourned. Thank you.